What is going on guys? Welcome back to Wildcat Cave. The Cats went down to Georgia and the only way I can describe their performance is embarrassing. I thought Stoops had elevated this program past the point of being humiliated, but apparently I was wrong. Now Kentucky has to be able to bounce back against a Mizzou team that's playing pretty well. Today we're going to recap the disaster that was Georgia and figure out how to move past it and beat Mizzou. Just to give you all a heads up, after Mizzou, Kentucky has a bye week and I have a big video planned. If you're a fan of the vlog style videos, then you're going to want to tune in. My next video is going to be the vlog of the best weekend you could possibly have in Kentucky. It's going to include Big Blue Madness, the Mizzou game, and Keeneland. Subscribe now so you don't miss out on the best of Kentucky. And if you're going to any of those, come say hi. You may be in the video. Also, drop your predictions to the UK Mizzou game in the comments for a chance to win a Wildcat Cave sticker shipped directly to you free of charge. Closest to the actual score will win. Now, I don't want to spend this whole video complaining about the Georgia game. It's in the past. We're still 5-1. and one. The sky isn't falling just yet, but this Mizzou game could very well determine the season. Since Stoops has been in Kentucky, there's been a trend of letting one bad loss become two, and if this team wants to achieve what they set out to, Stoops and company will have to bounce back in a big way and find a way to win this game. In my opinion, we had three major problems against Georgia. Two of them are things we've seen all season, and one is a newer development. The first of which is Devin Leary's inconsistency. I gotta be honest, I'm not sure exactly what to make of Leary halfway through the season. On one hand, his last full season at NC State, he threw for 35 touchdowns and only 5 interceptions and was the number one ranked quarterback in the transfer portal. But on the other, so far this season, he's been a roller coaster ride. At times, it makes me, he makes you want to believe that he's a first round draft pick, but at other times, he misses wide open receivers by 15 yards. He missed throws so bad against Georgia that Stoops has made multiple public comments about it, and that's just something Stoops really doesn't do. Leary's only completing 54% of his throws this season and only 38% against Georgia, and quite frankly, it's disappointing. Now, I also understand that his receivers have the second highest percentage of drop passes in the country, which is another issue, but if this team wants to have the year they hope to have, Leary's going to have to get this problem figured out. One thing that's also plagued this team all season is just stupid mistakes. There's no way to sugarcoat this. For some reason, over the better part of the past three seasons, Mark Stoops' Kentucky teams have shown time and time again how undisciplined they are. This season specifically, I hate to call out any player, but it's time we try to find an alternative to Jagger Burton. He was awful last season, and we had high hopes this year, but he's had five penalties through six games that either potentially or did cost us points, and all of them were just absolutely dumb bonehead penalties. I can live with effort penalties, but he's actively costing Kentucky points, and this team is not good enough to overcome those mistakes. He isn't the only person. Deion Walker's cost us a few, and so have some other guys. But to me, all of this comes back to the coaching staff. Discipline comes from the top down, and that's something that used to be a staple for Kentucky, but has recently turned into a liability. Speaking of coaching, my biggest problem with the Georgia game is how Kentucky just did not look like they were ready for the moment. As a coach, if you can't get your team ready to play the number one team in the country on their home field in prime time, then you need to take a hard look in the mirror and assess what you and your coaching staff is doing wrong. I don't think any fan, even the most diehard of us, expected to Kentucky to walk into Athens and come away with a win, but we didn't expect to be completely embarrassed, and I think that's what hurts the most. Now overall on the season, we're still exactly where we thought we'd be, and all of our goals we had a month ago are still within reach. But we have to beat the Missouri team that, can, that views Kentucky like Kentucky views teams like Florida and Tennessee. To them, Kentucky is the team that they have to beat consistently in order to take the next step, and they're playing well. Mizzou is also 5-1 coming off a heartbreaking loss to LSU. They present a unique challenge to Kentucky. Up until last week, Kentucky's secondary had been surprisingly solid after coming into the season with a lot of questions, but that all changed against Georgia. The Dogs, who have struggled offensively this year, threw for over 400 yards and five touchdowns. This is a Missouri team who likes to throw the rock around and have done it well halfway through the season. A lot of this game is going to be determined by how well Kentucky's secondary can lock down their receivers, specifically Luther Burden. That dude's the real deal and has the ability to beat you. Afari, Harrison, Phillips, Lovett, and those guys will have their work cut out for them this week, and a lot of Kentucky's success 
Depends on them Saturday. It'll also depend a lot on the defensive line. Missouri has the 12th ranked passing offense in the country, so making Brady Cook uncomfortable should be priority number one. Keyshawn Silver, Oxendine, Deion Walker, J.J. Weaver, Trevin Wallace, all of those guys need to be on their A game and make it as uncomfortable as they can on Cook and really disrupt them through the air. If they can do that, this game becomes a lot easier to win because I don't think Mizzou can run the ball on us well enough to win the game, especially in Kroger Field. On the flip side of that, Missouri has a pretty bad passing defense, and if there was ever a time for Leary and the receivers to get going, this is the week. They, there have been rumors around that Leary wasn't really grasping the offensive concepts that Cohen's been throwing at him, and there's been an emphasis in practice this week to make Leary more comfortable in his reads. I don't think he has to have a massive game, but even a stat line like 200 yards and two touchdowns will open up this offense enough to, I think, win the game fairly handily. Mizzou is currently ranked 28th in rush defense in the country, so that would be a good test for Ray Davis and the Big Blue Wall. If Kentucky can establish the run early against a defense like that, then I feel pretty confident in the catch chances. Georgia was ranked 22, and Kentucky obviously struggled running against them, but Kentucky's rush defense is 13 in the country, and they see that every day in practice. Kentucky's coming into the game Saturday as a two-and-a-half point favorite. As far as Vegas goes, that's a pretty small spread. They typically give the home team a three-point edge, so on a neutral field, this game would be a pick -em. Like I said early in the video, under Stoops, Kentucky has often let one bad loss turn into two. This game will be decided by which coach can get their team prepared after a bad loss. Kentucky obviously has the advantage of the home crowd at night, and even though last week was terrible for the Cats, I expect Big Blue Nation to be out in full force and try to cheer on Kentucky to get back on track. But again, it's a rivalry game for Missouri, and it's not really one for Kentucky. They view us as a rival, and we don't see them the same way, but we have to be ready to get their best game. As far as betting goes, I personally don't bet on Kentucky, but if I did, I think I'd pick Kentucky to cover the 2.5 point spread and obviously win the game. I think it may be a little bit of a shootout as well. The total for points is set at 52.5, which means Vegas thinks this is going to be around a 28-24 to 24 type of game, and I just think it's going to be higher scoring than that. For my prediction, I'll take Kentucky to win 33-27. to 27. Both teams have the offensive capability to have explosive plays. Kentucky should be able to run the ball fairly well. As long as we can contain their passing game, the Cats should have a good chance to win this one at home under the lights. If you're a betting person, I like Kentucky on the money line to cover the spread, and I think that they will hit the over on the points. That is going to wrap up this video, guys. Drop your predictions for the Missouri game down in the comments for a chance to win a free sicker. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the vlog next week and the rest of football and basketball season. I'll see you guys in the bye week. Go Cats!